Hey guys, Pat here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I am working on the floor in a box truck that we acquired about a year and a half, two years ago. Overall, the truck's in really good shape, but low mileage. Uh, structurally, it's in good shape. It's a 2000. I took out the old uh, work cabinets that were in there. Right where I'm standing was some old work cabinets that were in here, all beat up and wore out. So I pulled those out of here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, replace a rotten spot of the floor. This is fiberglass up in here and it was leaking along along that edge right there. So I went ahead this last summer, cleaned all that up and resealed that. That's in good shape. But over here, right up here, you'll see a black spot. It looks like tar or some sort of a silicone that they use to try to patch a, another little hole. That patch, as ugly as it looks, is not a hole. But right over here, there's a, a hole. And so it's been leaking down the wall and down to the floor. And it's been resting on the floor here. And so this, this piece right here is laminated oak. They're pretty tough panels, but after a while they'll, like any wood, will rot out. So, so that has to be replaced. This one's still solid, so I'm going to leave this one. But from here, back to the wall, and all along this whole piece here, I'm going to replace this. I built another panel with one inch wide boards that I milled, I made yesterday. I have those glued together and actually in some clamps. So that should be dry today. And I wanted to go ahead and take this, this part up. I know that there's a cross member in here because there's a screw underneath this and a screw underneath this so what i have to do is i have to take this panel up in pieces and then the panel that i'm building i have to cut it in two where there's a um a structural rib that runs across the floor so i can get it underneath this piece of angle iron this is where the steps are to come in the man door this is a piece of angle iron and this is a man door that comes into the the truck so I have to feed the board underneath this piece of angle iron and then underneath this panel here that they have this panel I could take it off but I would have to remove that fuel tank because there's screws back behind here where that panel goes in back behind that fuel tank so I've decided to go ahead and leave this panel attached it goes clear across to this corner I'm going to feed a board in through this way and then feed a board in through this way and find a seam where I can cut the board and make it fit somewhere here I'll uh, when I remove this I'll find out exactly where the center of this cross rib is and then I can decide where to cut the new board that I'm building for this this box here contains a new cabinet that is going to go this is a 72 inch cabinet that's going to go up along this wall to replace the old cabinets that were basically kind of old and broke down and Cody's on rodent patrol but uh, this is some of the equipment that I pulled out of here um, all top-notch stuff but I don't need it for what I'm gonna use the truck for uh, it had old tanks in it that uh, had some Krako pumps uh, real nice pumps actually and this one here I converted it into a, a fuel cell for diesel and this is the old cabinets that were in there like I say they're they're pretty beat up and in bad shape okay here we are with the house and uh, it's been a day that I've had this uh, glued up and drying I actually glued it up it's kind of cold out in the shop so I glued it up out here and then took it into the house and warmed it by the fireplace all night so it should be good enough to dry or good enough to unclamp. So this will be the piece obviously that will replace that rotten piece that I showed you just a few seconds ago. Okay the next step on this is to uh, get this nice and flat. Uh, even when you glue this together the boards might have a little bit of a concave or a convex uh, shape to them 
So now, now that I have them all laminated together, I have to have to sound this down nice and flat on the one side, and then run it through the planer. So what I'll do is I'll um, take any bumps off of here from the glue, just hit this real quick with a, a sander, and take it over to the planer. My only mission here is just to knock the, the glue off of here to where it's, it's a little bit flat to where I can run it through the planer. putting a lot of pressure on this I didn't want to have a lot of um, friction and have the glue melt and adhere to the bottom of or the, the sanding belt so just letting the weight of the sander do its thing and so now now what I'll do is I'll flip this over and then run this side through the through the planer Now we're over with the ready alarm saw. We'll go ahead and clean up this uh, one edge. Now we're just squaring it up. Now I'm going to leave it just like this. Go ahead and put a polyurethane finish on it. I don't see any reason to sand it at this point. It's just going to be on the floor. At some point I might put fiberglass resin on here on the whole floor and refinish the whole floor, but I haven't decided that. That'll be a later date. So here I'm just putting a polyurethane on this. That'll keep uh, the moisture out of it. I went ahead and put some of this on the back side and just flipped it over. I don't really care if there's any marks on the back side because the back side doesn't matter. You won't be able to see it. But this is the top and it's just a floor and out workshop. It's not going to matter a whole lot, but uh, you know, if you're typically doing a project and you want to get both sides done at once you can put a couple of stickers underneath it uh, your piece your work piece and then put a finish on the back side of it and then just flip it over and then these pieces will just snap right off they won't get stuck on there too too awful bad so that way you can get your back and front or back and top accomplished at the same same time you don't have to let the backside dry and then flip it over although you can do that i mean but i'm not really concerned about what the back looks like so that's why i'm doing it this way just using a cheap old sash brush but this uh material is from that equipment deck i replaced the deck on my equipment trailer a few years back and and saved the boards from that because they were oak i thought the irregularities were kind of neat and so um a few years back, I did a video on a countertop that I made with this same wood. And I made it a habit to keep the imperfections in the wood and some of the staining. And it turned out pretty nice. Okay, here we are back out the truck. Now it's time to tear some stuff up. through all the trouble of marking our holes where our mounting hardware is going to go through the new flooring 
and into the cross members in the floor of the truck. So we got all that laid out, <clears throat> and now I have um, a few different items that um, that I'm going to need to make it form to these special self-tapping deck screws, and they're just a deck screw. Supposed to be a self-tapping, self-threading screw. As you can see on the end of the end of the screw, it has these uh, perforations in here, or this, I guess, serrated edge, and that bites in and cuts in new threads into the metal that you're actually screwing this into. So what I'll do is I'll drill a pilot hole in here big enough to insert this screw easy to where it just falls into the hole. So the hole is going to be the, about the diameter of the outside edges of the threads. So when, then when I go to drill into the cross members of the truck, the drill bit that I use is just going to be the size of the shank. Or maybe even a little smaller. So this can actually self-thread into the cross members of the truck floor. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, drill, this uh, countersink bit. And this will get me a pilot hole into the center of the cross piece. And because I'm not sure about the taper, if this if this countersink is actually going to be wide enough, which I don't think is going to be, I'll use this. I can't remember the name of this, but it's uh, like a chamfer bit, I believe, that uh, I can make I can make the countersink just a little bit deeper to accommodate the new fasteners that go into the floor and into the cross member of the truck. As you can see we have plenty of depth. I, ha I got these just a little bit longer than my la the last ones that I took out. So I would be assured that um, I have enough. This flooring is actually just a little bit narrower than the other flooring that's in there by about a quarter inch or three sixteenths or something like that. So I'll have to build a shim to go across each one of the cross members that come across here. That come across between the floor and the cross members now because this is going to be in a corner i'm not really concerned about the structural integrity of this because i've got fasteners every 15 inches or i got support actually less than 15 inches it's probably more like 12 and a half to 13 inches of support in between here and it's in a corner so i'm not gonna there's not going to be a lot of load bearing on here uh, what is going to be setting on this is going to be that tool cabinet, but however, uh, there's going to be a lot of displacement, so I'm not really worried about another 3 16 of an inch of support along through here on the bottom. Now, I could put a piece of plywood underneath there, like a quarter inch piece of plywood or something. Again, not really concerned about it. Okay, so the next bit I'll be using is the drill bit that is the same diameter as the uh, threads on the, on the bolt. So that should self-center on that existing pilot hole. So this is where that chamfer bit's going to come in, is that's going to widen the hole a little bit so the tapered portion of that the fastener can actually go into the floor. Again, that should center because there's a hole. See how that looks. Okay, that counter sinks very well. That looks good. 
Now ultimately it would have been better to have a chamfer bit that was the same diameter as the head of the fastener but I don't have one so this is the best we can do right here. So I took some rough measurements of the floor and the cross members. What I still have to do is I have to clean these little eye beams up here but I wanted to find where center was for each one of these cross beams because I need to know where to drill the holes to secure the new piece of floor to these I-beams. So I got it off center because I don't want to drill right into the center of the I-beam or I'll be hitting the center of the I-beam. <laughs> so I have to offset it a little bit but I did want to find out exactly where the center of that I-beam is so I took measurements what I'll do is I'll cut here or I'll cut here on this I-beam right at the center and then just off center, I'll have bolts securing the new piece of wood. That will make all this new. Okay, here we are at the radio arm saw. And I'm going to measure in five and three quarters and make a mark. And that will establish the center of my first little I beam closest to the door. My second mark is going to be at the seven and three, 17 and three quarter inch mark. That's so I can fit it into the frame. Uh, my third line is going to be at 33 inches. And what that's going to do is that's going to give me that third area where I'm going to mount the mounting screws into the last area to fasten to. The final measurement is going to be up here at... 37 and 3 quarters and, and the reason for that line is that's where we're going to cut off cut off this board this is just the rest of it will be waste so here's where we cut the board off I want to put a roll of fasteners there here's another place where I'm going to be cutting this board in two and then I'll be putting fasteners at two inches I have to cut that at seven and three sixteenths inches wide so I need to go to the table saw and cut this first okay now we can make those two inch measurements all the way across. So if this is going to be the center, we want to come in, oh, let's say half an inch on each side. I'm going to make a light mark here so I know where to mark, know where to measure off of. And I'm going to say, oh, let's say a half inch. Make another light mark. And I'm going to go in at two inches, two inches on this side, and that will match what the other boards are doing throughout the truck. Now on this one, this is where we're going to cut the board in two. So I want to come in, we can go in at two inches, we want to come in each side, let's go for three quarters. No, I changed my mind. I'm going to go to 5 eighths. And then in 2 inches. Then I'm going to make my cut first because there's going to be an eighth of an inch of kerf. Now I can measure in 5 eighths on this side. And two inches down. And lot the last mounting point, I'll come in at five five eighths. Okay, I think the key here is is to make sure they have at least four screws holding each one of these little panels down on each panel.
two here, two here, and then two here, and two here. Okay, we're back in the box truck, and this piece has to be notched out for this wire to run through. Previously, they just drilled down through here and ran this wire in, but unfortunately, the easiest thing, easiest thing for me to do is to take the bandsaw and cut this notch out so I can just slide this panel all the way to the back side of this angle iron instead of taking this wire loose and just drilling a new hole here and then sending the wire back through I could just notch this instead and just go around that wire all right we're back at the truck and the floor repair pieces are actually done and ready to install so again we clean these up we put osfo on there to kill any rust then we primed them. Now I'm just going to go ahead and throw a little bit of a finish on there. Uh, nothing too fancy, just something to pr help protect it. Okay, again, I'm not looking for anything uh, miraculous to put into a car show or any place, but just something to protect it. Okay, there's the finished product. I did try to cut corners and when I put that little shim in there, I should have glued that in place to keep it in place uh, before I tried to cut corners and drill through that and through that I-beam as well. So hindsight, I could have saved myself a lot of time. I wouldn't have been done by now, but I would have saved myself some time if I would have just went ahead and glued those in place, left, came back tomorrow, and then and then just go ahead and set the floor in. But uh, it worked out either way. This will support the tool cabinet that's going to go across here and replace that rotten piece that I took out. So I hope some of you guys got some tips and tricks out of there, things of what to do, what not to do. Anyway, uh, appreciate you stopping by. Take care and God bless.